Hey guys and welcome back to my solo fight or illusionist playthrough. We're going to be starting off by doing the vampire quest and advancing the main story and then I'm going to take on the rest of the cowled wizards after that. And then after that we're probably going to head to Brynlaw and continue the main story which will kind of lock us into a linear path for a while. I could also go to the Umar Hills and do that quest first, it's probably but I probably just want to advance the main story and then do all the other side quests that I've not done so far. I don't know if I mentioned it outright, but the Ring of Gax makes you immune to the effects of Cloud Kill, which means I can just drop it at my feet for fights like this. Obviously it's not going to work on the undead as we're going into, but makes this fight a lot easier. And we pick up the figurine that summons the spider, which I might keep around because it could be useful. In this room we're going to pick up the Mace of Disruption. It basically works like an insta-gill effect for the undead if they fail their save with a negative 4 penalty. I might not actually use it that much but I did decide to pick it up here because it may have some uses to shorten some fights later in the game against undead. Which is why I got the Alithium Ore because I can upgrade it at Cromwell. But as you can see even with no buffs up like no mirror image, no stone skin up. I'm actually not taking that much damage from these enemies. And I can regenerate the health from the Ring of Gax as well. Since we're running into casters that like to cast stuff like Shadow Door, Improved Invisibility, Mislead, I'm probably going to swap over to memorizing at least one cast of True Sight after this. Especially after I fight the cowled wizards. You'll notice in this fight that we pick up a scroll of Mordenkainen's sword. Actually very lucky that I picked that up because otherwise you aren't able to get that scroll until the Underdark. We also hit the 3 million experience mark which means we get two high level abilities because we leveled up both as a mage and a fighter at the same time. So we can't pick any of the level 10 mage spells. 
but I end up taking Critical Strike. And there's two reasons that this is beneficial. So the first is any attack that you make during Critical Strike will roll a 20, even if the game doesn't display it as a 20. So it will always hit. So that means against any enemy we'll, we, we will be hitting. And for enemies without helmets, like the undead for example, we will be critting for extra damage as well. The nice thing though is if you wanted to, you could take two-handed weapons and then take a bunch of Greater Whirlwinds and just use those. For example, I could take Greater Whirlwind and then use Staff of the Magi to hit ten attacks per round. Unfortunately, you can't have Greater Whirlwind and Critical Strike active at the same time because they only last one round. So I end up testing Critical Strike against this guy here. Even though enemies do become immune to crits eventually, it is still useful for the automatic hit. And you'll notice I did 36 and then 46 damage with a one-handed weapon as well. The last fight over here is not very difficult, as you would expect. Of course, the slow helps with any sort of melee opponent. And I don't think I even buff, really. I might throw up Stone Skin at the end, because she does do some damage to me, but... Not... not that necessary. No, I don't even need to. done. I'm there. If it must be done. Drive all Bartman at your service. I don't usually speak to the likes of you, but hello. I do pick up Limited Wish here, but honestly, those scrolls are probably not worth it. Um, the, the vendor also has stuff like symbols, but I feel as though I'm pretty much never going to use those, most likely. I'm also just sorting out my inventory in case I do want to go to Brynlaw next, which is likely going to be where I'm going. Forward in the story a little bit. So I'm basically going to be taking the Shield of Balderon because I'm eventually going to run into some Beholders. And I'm also going to upgrade the Mace of Disruption, so I take the Alithia Moor out as well. We're going to get a Bag of Holding very quickly into Brynlaw, so... Inventory space generally isn't a uh, concern too much at this point. I hope this is worth it. Yeah, I'll see to it. What is it? I got some cheap beer for ya. I gotta stop dipping into me own ale. I pick up a few scrolls that I actually missed earlier, like for example Incendiary Cloud and Spell Sequencer. 
Spell Sequencer could always be useful, and Incendiary Cloud is kind of the best replacement we have for Horrid Wilting, to be honest. Unfortunately, it does fire damage, which is pretty commonly resisted. The bonus for that, though, is the fact that you can make yourself protected from fire and then just walk in the cloud. And over time, it will do more damage than a Horrid Wilting. We're also going to finish up this quest, although this is a side quest that's probably not worth it at this point. But I figured I may as well do it. There's a few encounters that I have skipped, for example the Celestial Fury House. I probably don't need to do that as I'm never going to use that katana really. Oh, I know a discerning eye when I see one. Time is up for you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, you and me. Let's go. It's done. Be done. The Morning Lord welcomes you to his sight. It's probably best left to me. Hey, not a concern. Starting to wear on me nerves. I do upgrade the Mace of Disruption here. It's honestly probably not worth it because it doesn't actually upgrade the damage at all. It just gives it immunity to level drain and it will also add plus one Thaco to it. But I think it pretty much stays the same aside from now hitting as a plus five weapon, which isn't that important, I would say. But regardless, I upgrade it anyway because I may as well. Because I probably will eventually use it. This is worth it. Yeah, I'll see to it. So we're going to be taking on the killed wizards now, after we run this uh, vampire encounter. My main thing to do with them is to spawn them using a spell trap when I use the Staff of the Magi, and then run away from them, buff, and then come back and fight them. And there's about five or six waves that I go through, so it does take quite a long time, but there is a group at the end that has a named NPC. And I believe she's a level 36 necromancer in game, which is just ridiculous. And she has time stop. Although she doesn't appear to use it that much. So protection for magic energy in case they cast any horrid rollings or stuff at me. Improved haste. It should be all I need for most of these groups. And our main thing is to basically just hit them with the staff of the magi and then finish off with my regular weapons. Nice thing is we pick up Kilburn's Warding Whip here. It's a spell protection removal and I kind of like it because it, it fires off three times. Now it won't get rid of spell trap, so that is the one concern about it. But spell trap is pretty uncommon from what I know. Right now it's more effective to really use the Staff of the Magi and just dispel them through hitting them. But later on I'm likely going to need to throw some spell debuffs or spell removal at dragons and stuff like that. Declare yourself. Time is up for you. Yeah. Let's have North. No 
In the name of the council, I am here to... It's done. It's a cold and dreary day when the them can't extend a bit of hospitality to his guests. Come, enter and be welcome at the sea's bounty. <laughs> when the them can't extend a bit of hospitality to his gaze. It's probably best left to me. We also run into an our vampire fight here, and I think I cast stone skin and then go, oh shit, that summons the wizards. Um, so I do have to run away a bit. It might be a bit cheesy in order to summon them and then, you know, run away and buff up. But you could do that by buffing inside houses as well, so... Plus, all I'm really casting is Spell Trap and then Protection from Magic Energy and Improved Haste. Which I probably could cast if I just went up to their face anyway. extend a bit of hospitality to his guests. I hope this is worth it. This is the one that ends up being the last wave and then the cowled wizards won't bother us again after this. So I, I have swapped to using true sight as well at the same time. But the main thing for this is there's an NPC called Zalanora and she's the level 36 necromancer I was talking about. I believe she's that in the game. But there's two wizards here that don't throw up um, protection from magical weapons. So th those are the ones that I focus first. And these enemies like to throw a bunch of summons your way. So keep that in mind. Because this place is going to be pretty crowded. One thing to note is that Zalanora will use time stop and then basically run away if she gets the low HP. So what we're going to do is use Critical Strike to basically kill her as quickly as possible. And she is the last mage on the screen now. And then we manage to dispel her, bring out Critical Strike, and I think she dies in like 3 hits, yeah. After we dispel her, it's, it's really easy to kill mages as you would expect. So I don't think she actually drops anything really that worthwhile, as I recall. There are where some necklaces dropped that can sell for about 1800, which is nice. But aside from that, I didn't get too many scrolls I didn't have apart from Kelvin's Warding Whip. The last thing that I forgot to do earlier is to recharge one of my wands of cloud kill. Since we are pretty much immune to it with a wand of Gax now, it might be something that I just drop occasionally. And I think it only cost me like 4,000 gold after I cast friends, so it's ridiculously cheap to recharge by this point. For what it is, I mean it is 50 charges of cloud kill on a wand. And that's pretty much going to be it for now, so unless someone wants me to do a few more quests before I head off to Brynlaw. 
that's probably where I'm going to be going next. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. I'll see to it.